I went to 3M and started working on fluorochemicals, a brand new field of chemistry. I was a prep man working with perfluorobutyric acid, which, have you ever smelled rancid butter? Mm -hmm. This is about 10 times worse. But I made several derivatives. And the next year I, I did not go because of prelims. But in the following year, in 1951, I went there and worked again and made some new compounds out of perfluorobutyric acid. In 1952, I took a long interview trip 3M was still the best one. They even raised the initial offer after I had accepted it. And I spent the rest of my 38 years at 3M working in a variety of uh, jobs, 17 jobs in eight, 38 years. One of the things that I started with was uh, trying to find ways of adhering color abrasives to polyester backing, mylar, and found some ways in which to do it. Patented them, and about that time, magnetic tape, which was a big thing in 3M at those days, really going good. Television was just coming in, and the original television recorders were very, very tough on tape. They couldn't keep the coating on the tape at all. With what, what I had discovered, they were able to do that and were very successful with videotape. And about the time I retired, that's 30 some odd years later, they finally phased it out. Post-it notes is a fascinating story because it's a fascinating story about an adhesive that wasn't supposed to be made. The objective was to make a very strong pressure sensitive adhesive. And here's one that wouldn't tear paper when you took it off. What do you do with it? Well, the first thing we did was, uh, it was, it was, women were still cutting out their own dresses. With that, we decided we'd coat patterns. So you just lay it on there and it would stick well enough so you could cut out the pattern. You just pull it off, you'd use it again. We thought we really had the barn burner. It didn't go anywhere. And finally, the commercial tape the division decided that they wanted to stick with it and worked very hard on trying to make a product with it. And Art Fry and others finally made a post-it note. And what there was, of course, was just adhesive on one edge of a piece of paper and a little pad that you could take a piece off. And if, if you see the post-it note, you know what it looks like. And finally, People over in the marketing department of the commercial tape division saw these pads and decided to grab a few of them to see what they could do with them. And pretty soon they kept or kept asking the lab for more. And finally the technical director said, I'm going to charge them. I'm going to charge them more. Well, they finally woke up to the point they were paying for these things and said, well, we pay for them, maybe somebody else will too. When the market test began, four cities, they didn't succeed in selling any. The technical director and the general manager said, what do we do now? He said, well, let's give some away at one city. So they did. They left samples all over the city. And then came back about two or three months later and ran the same test in that city and one of the others where it did not succeed. And the one where it did not succeed, it didn't succeed again. But in the one where they left the samples, they just took orders. It's a very interesting story in persistence. Don't worry about failing. If you don't fail, you're not doing your job. I talked to se several people at various meetings, and I mentioned this to a fellow that I got to know fairly well. He said, oh, that's what makes it so difficult for us to do work on new products. Because as soon as it, you get on one and it fails, you're gone. You don't have a job. We've never fired anybody for failing. If they didn't do good work or didn't work hard, yes, sure. But if they never tried, we've done that too, if they never tried to be good. 
but prevailing on a project? No. One of the things that you have to be careful for as, as, a, as an engineer is to be sure you don't hide any results. Tell the truth. All the way, tell the truth. If, it's, if the experiment went lousy, tell them. If you can't figure it out, get help. There was a number of Nebraska graduates in chemical engineering at, the, at 3M who graduated shortly after World War II. And I had the Anderson brothers, Jerry Miller and Norm Marine, in an analytical, quantitative analytical laboratory that I was the assistant for when I was getting my master's degree. And here I am teaching these young chemical engineers about analytical chemistry. When I retired, but just before I retired, there were four of us from Nebraska in the top ranks at 3M. Lou Lair, of course. Jerry Mueller had the engineering. Lauren Marine had manufacturing, and I had research. And we all retired about the same time, and I was the last one of the Nebraska Mafia to retire.